Download complete. Next chain of memory is ready. Program restarting. In three, two, one. Each pony has their own unique timeline that tells a story of their life. Some are just more interesting than others. The next memory started with Mom walking towards an old rundown cottage. I was still on her back as she slowly made her way towards it. She was only a few feet away when the door flew open, and an older mare was standing there with her horn glowing. What do you want, Spell? Mom's horn glowed too, as she said. Move out of the way, Mother. I told you I didn't want you to come back here after what you pulled, she yelled. Then she tried to cast a spell, but Mom blasted it aside. Mom pushed past her mother. I don't have time for you right now. I'll be in and out. After this, you won't see me again. My grandmother got back to her hooves. Wait a minute. Who's that on your back? Mom just kept walking past the sitting room. Your granddaughter. Her name is Star. Mommy, who's that? I asked from her back. No, pony sweetie. And just keep your head down and be quiet. Mom said, walking into a smaller bedroom. I could hear my grandmother following. Spell, what are you doing here? She asked as Mom used her magic to move the little bed. Under the bed, there was a large floor safe. She looked away from it and at Grandmother. Give me the key. No, you have no right to what's in that safe. She hissed. Give it to me or I'll blow it open. I'd rather not make too much noise. Mom threatened. Why should I give you anything? What have you done for me, huh? You left after your father died. You never came to visit. Never told me that you, when you married that Pegasus... And didn't even know you had a foal until Ori's trial. You've been nothing but selfish brat for most of your life, and now you expect me to just let you take the last of our family's treasures? My grandmother said. There was a fleck of shadow behind her and two purple eyes. Mom saw them and smiled. If you won't give me the key, then how about my brother? She spat. Ori's no better than you, Spell. He went too far with his magic, and now he's lost to darkness. My uncle's voice came out from the shadows behind my grandmother. I wouldn't say I'm lost to shadows, mother. I'd say that I've become its master. Now, give Spell the key before I make you. My grandmother twisted around to find herself looking up at my uncle as his body formed. Ori, I told you I didn't want you to come here anymore. I can't risk ponies seeing me with a monster like you. Oricalus chuckled evilly. First of all, Mother, I gave up my name when I took on this power, and when I made the deal with the Enclave. I am pride now. Second, no pony cares if you're seen with me or any pony else. You're nothing but an old hag nowadays that lives in a rundown shack. Now give us the key. While her mother's back was turned, Mom's horn started to glow. This is taking too long. She cast a spell, and my grandmother's eyes closed as she passed out. I didn't come here to deal with her. Oricalus looked over at Mom. And I didn't realize I'd made her that angry after I took this form. Mom walked over to her mother and started looking through her pockets of her dirty jacket. I thought I told you I didn't need your help, Pride. He shrugged. You did, and I would have stayed away. But then I caught sight of three pegasi heading this way. Figured I'd follow them to see what they were up to. When I saw them going for this dump, I had a feeling that I'd find you inside. So I took care of them. Mom pulled a small key out of her mother's jacket. So, you killed three soldiers to keep them from finding me? You know that three dead bodies will just tell them which way I went, right? Oricalus laughed. I didn't kill them. I just made sure they started looking for you someplace else. Mom put the key into the safe and unlocked it. When she opened it, I saw it only had a couple of things inside. The biggest thing was the same plasma rifle I now had with a few less improvements. There was also a box of memory orbs and a note and a zebra stealth cloak. At least the rifle's still here, Mom said, after picking up everything else and putting it into her saddlebags apart from the plasma rifle and the notebook. She looked back at Oricalus. Thanks for the help, the Pegasi. But... 
How did they know that I left? I'm not sure. All I know is at some point he said they saw you sneaking out and headed towards the wall. Oh well. I'll be out of here soon, and once I'm past the wall, they won't be a problem. Mom said as she closed the safe and went back to her mother and put the key back into her pockets. Oricalis watched her mother as she used another spell on her. I felt like a memory spell. What are you doing? Making sure she forgets I was ever here. If the Enclave comes looking, I don't want them to know where I went. It should buy some time, Mom said as she finished. Then she looked at the notebook. What's that? My uncle asked. Dwarf Star's journal, Mom said as she stuffed it into her saddlebags. I didn't even know Mom had that. How did you know? I saw it once when she opened the safe. Everything in here belonged to our great-great-grandfather. Mom keeps it around like a prize or something. I figured I could make better use of it than Mom. I'm sure you can, Mordecai said as Mom put the bed back where it was. So, where are you going? You never told me. New Pegasus. I think there's something there that can help Star. That's a long way to go, sis. How are you getting there? He asked. I have my ways. Can I come? I can help you, he asked. No, I need you to keep up the act of being a loyal servant to the Enclave. But I can help, Oricala said. I know, but I need you here more, at least for now. In a couple of weeks, though, I'll need you to do something for me, Mom said as she stepped over her mother and started trotting for the door. What? I need you to go to the Badlands and look for something. My contact thinks part of what I need to help Star is down there. Look for a big spire of some kind out there. It might be hidden or disguised. If you find anything, let me know as soon as you can. Mom said as she headed out the door. I will, Oricalo said. Before Mom left, I poked my head up, saying quickly, I love you, Uncle Ori. I felt Mom smile a little, but she kept on walking as a broken voice responded, I love you too, kiddo. Stay safe. The memory shifted again. Now Mom was hiding behind a broken down farmhouse next to the tall wall of black that rolled up the nearly invisible barrier that surrounded the Crystal Empire. She was holding me close as she watched the skies. It didn't take long for her to spot someone flying just over the wall of black and through the barrier. Is that a griffin? She said as she looked down at me. Okay, sweetie. Mommy's just going to help you sleep a little. This next part of our trip is going to be tough. I looked up at her, my red eyes sparkling from under the hood of my small cloak. Okay. Mom cast a spell as I watched my eyes droop and I fell against her. She set me down, making sure the cloak was keeping me hidden. Then she stepped out from hiding as the griffin landed. It was Tonto, a younger Tonto, but still him. Tonto looked around for a moment, a rifle at the ready in one talon. Then he looked at Mom. Are you Grimoire Spell? Mom's horn started to glow as she said, I might be. Who are you? Tonto Greybeak, with the red talons. I was contracted by a mayor named the Director. He said, keeping his rifle ready just in case. She didn't say anything about a griffin. What's the passphrase? Tonto took a moment to think, then said, May the night stay free. Mom's body relaxed as she said, And the light shine bright. Tonto lowered his rifle. Sorry I'm late. I had to dodge a few enclave patrols. Are you ready to go? Yes, my daughter is just on the other side of this house. Mom said, whacking back to where I was sleeping. She lifted me with her magic. How are we going to do this? We'll have to move fast. I heard that your daughter is sick, right? She is, but she's okay for now. I just put her to sleep so the trip will be easier, Mom said. Okay, then I'll have you both get on my back. We might run into trouble as we fly. Do you have weapons, Miss Spell? Tonto asked as he lowered himself down. Mom pulled her plasma rifle off her back. I sure do. She lifted me up with her magic and set me on Tonto's back. Then she got up too. Make sure you hold on tight. 
I'm not as young as I used to be, but I'm still a fast flyer, Tonto said as he opened his wings and took off. Mom held on tight, keeping me held down as Tonto blasted into the air. He flew high up for a few seconds, and later we were through the barrier and flying away from the Crystal Empire. Once we were out, I understood why no pony knew the Crystal Empire was still around. Whatever the zebras did here, it was nothing like what they did with the rest of Equestria. From the fields around the area, black smoke seemed to roll along the land below. It was moving from all sides, heading towards the Crystal Empire. When it ran into a barrier, it moved up slowly until it reached the point where the dome curved up on it, then rolled back on itself. A pillar of bright white light shot up through the middle of the city, right where the castle was, powering the barrier itself. The light also shot past it, and into the night sky like a beacon. You'd think that light would make it easier to know the Empire was still there, but I knew from stories Mom told me when I was little that the light could only be seen from the Twin Cities. The Enclave made sure to keep all ponies away from that area. First, to make sure that no pony ever found the city. Second, to keep ponies from dying a horrific death. The stories say that if you step one hoof inside the black smoke, you'll be dead before you took another. Mom let out a small sigh as the city faded behind us. I've been away from the city before, but now I feel like I'll never see it again. Tonto turned southwest, then said, I'm sorry to say this, but it might be the last time. I'm sure that the Enclave wouldn't want you back after tonight. Mom turned away from the city. You're right, but I'm still going to miss it. Do you have any family there? Tonto asked. Just my husband and one friend. Mom said, Why didn't he come with you? He had to stay behind. He can help me more within the city than outside of it. I do hope you can see him one day. Me too, she said, looking down at Tonto. I've heard of the Red Talons before. I thought you had some kind of rule about helping the Enclave. Rule five. The Red Talons will never make a contract for the Grand Pegasus Enclave, or and pony associated with them. Remember the fall of Griffinstone, he said. Yes, but as far as I see it, I'm not taking a contract from you, Miss Spell. I'm helping a friend of mine. Well, wouldn't she be considered being associated with the Enclave? He looked back at her. I don't know. Do you think of yourself as being Enclave? Mom rolled her eyes. I guess not. There you go. Now relax, Miss Spell. We have a long flight to get you out of Enclave territory. Mom smiled a little. Grim. Call me Grim. The memory faded and another started with Mom running through a field with me on her back, crying. She looked back at three Pegasi who were giving chase. Fuck, I can't believe they tracked us this far. Mommy, I'm scared, I said. One of the Pegasi yelled down at us. If you keep running, Grim, we'll be forced to open fire. Mom sped up, yelling back. I'm not going back. Just leave me alone. Another Pegasus said, Just take her down. Make sure you don't kill the kid. There were a few rocks poking out of the ground just ahead. Star, hold on tight and close your eyes, she said as she teleported right as one of the Pegasi opened fire. We reappeared on the other side of the rock, and Mom set me down, looking over me quickly. Star, are you feeling okay? I could see through Mom's eyes that I was breathing heavily. I think so. Just try and control your breathing and keep your eyes closed, Mom said, pulling out the plasma rifle off her back. I did as Mom l looked around at the rocks at the three Pegasi, who were now grounded. Their battle saddles ready to fire. A mare who was in front said, Grim, you can't keep running. Come out and surrender, and this will go a lot easier for you. I can't do that. I'm not going back until I can cure my daughter, Mom said, still keeping behind the rocks for cover. The mare sighed. Grim, you're lucky we haven't shot you already. We're showing you what little mercy we can because of your husband. You've already committed treason by running into the wasteland like this, and taking Enclave's secrets with you. You've also kidnapped Nightshade's daughter. So please, 
Surrender, so we don't have to put the bullet through your head. Don't let your daughter see that. She's sick. The Enclave can't help her. Only I can. I don't care what you think I've done. I'm doing this for, to keep her alive. Now leave me be before I'm forced to do something I'll regret. Mom said. One of the stallions said, Get out of here, Grimoire, or I'll make you. Mom looked back at me, then sighed. She used her magic to put her plasma rifle down behind the rocks and stepped out. All three pegasi tensed, but Mom just said, Promise me that you'll keep Star safe. The mare walked closer, putting out what looked like hoof cuffs. We aren't here to hurt your daughter, Grim. We were given orders by the council to take you in. You're doing the right thing by surrendering. I'll be sure to tell the council that you cooperated. When the mayor was only a few feet away, Mom asked, How long have we known each other, Skye? Since we were in school. Why? Mom had tears in her eyes as she continued. And in all those years, have you ever known me to do anything against the Enclave? She shook her head. No, but ponies change, and I understand that you think there's something out here that can help Star, but you know the wasteland is just that. Star's more likely to die out here than back at home. You know that I would do anything to keep her alive, right? I do. But it's not out here. Now let me put you on these so we can get you home, she said, holding up the cuffs. You're kind, Sky. Always have been. For that, I'll let you live, Mom said. Huh? Sky said, but she didn't get a chance to say anything else. Mom used her magic to pull her plasma rifle out from behind the rocks. As she did, she pulled Sky into a headlock and pointed the rifle at the other two pegasi. Fly away and forget you ever saw me, or I'll drop all of you, Mom said, her voice filled with anger. Let me go, Sky said, trying to pull free, but Mom held on tighter. The stallion, who spoke it before, just chuckled. Can't do that, Grim. We have orders, and personally, I have no problem killing you. One less unicorn scum in our city to deal with. Now, let Captain Sky go. Mom just smiled a little. No way. She opened fire. The first blast of plasma slammed into the stallion who'd been talking, blowing his head right off. The recoil from the rifle was a lot stronger than it was now, and that almost flew out of Mom's magical grip. The second stallion started to charge up his energy rifles on his battle saddle, but Mom opened fire on him before he got a chance to fire. Three shots slammed into his chest, throwing him back. His body rolled across the dirt and came to a stop. He didn't get back up. What did you do, Grim? Sky asked in a panic. Mom just sighed. I'm keeping my daughter safe. You just killed two Enclave officers. You'll be put to death for that. Sky said in horror. Mom moved closer to her ear. I didn't do anything. For all the Enclave knows, they were killed by Steel Rangers or some other monster out here. So you're going to kill me too? No. I have no reason to. Grim, friend or no, you still murdered two soldiers. I can't hide that from... Mom interrupted her. Don't worry. You'll forget all about this. Her horn started to glow again as she started to cast a memory spell. You were attacked by steel rangers while you were looking for me. You found no sign of grimoire and were headed back. Both members of your wing fell and you just barely got away. Now... Tell me what happened. Her eyes had gone glassy as she reported. We were searching for Grimoire Spell west of the Twin Cities. Found no sign that she'd gone that way. We believe she's heading east, maybe south. We were on our way back when we ran into steel rangers who were scouting out close to our territory. They fired, and we tried to defend ourselves. My wing didn't make it, and I just barely managed to get away. Good. Now sleep. Mom said casting another spell to knock her out. When Mom was done, she set the same mare down. Then she was finished, she noticed the pegasi who'd been blown back was trying to crawl away. She picked up her plasma rifle again and slowly walked towards him. 
You're tougher than you look. He looked back at her, his face bloody from the roll and blood coating his chest. I... I won't tell. I won't. She got as close as she could, then pointed her rifle at his head. I know you won't. She blasted his head off, blood spraying and covering her face and mane. She took a step back and wiped her eyes. Damn it. Mommy? I heard myself say. What happened? Mom looked back at me. I was looking out from the rocks. She started to cry as she said, They were going to kill us, sweetie. I'm sorry, my little star, but they had to die. They had to. Mom ran over to me and hugged me as she cried harder. I'm not sure if she could tell the state of mind she was in, but I could feel my little body stay limp in her hooves. As the memory faded, I remembered that day better now. Mom cried for half an hour after she killed the two stallions. I was in shock because I'd never seen any pony die. The entire time she cried, I just sat there in her hooves, eyes glued on the two dead stallions and the mare who was sleeping not far off. The next memory started with Mom sitting across the table from a mare who looked around the same age as Mom. She reminded me a lot of Cookie Bite. She had the same electric blue mane and the same blue eyes, but her coat was yellow, not white. Mom was smiling at her. A deal's a deal, dust devil. The mare looked like a clean raider, but she spoke like a mare from a stable. I still say that you cheated. No pony whims that many games of caravan without cheating. Mom just leaned back in her chair. You know I didn't. I kept my horn from glowing the entire time. I used my hooves to pick up the cards and all. Now don't be a sore loser. Or do Pony and Trotston not hold up their bets? The mare cursed, then slammed her left foreleg onto the table. On it, I saw the silver Mark II. My Mark II. No wonder she looked like Cookie Bite. This had to be her mother. Dust Devil glared at Mom. I always keep my word, Unicorn. You wanted to know how to remove one, huh? Fine. I'll tell you. I don't think so, Dust Devil. The bet was that you'd show me how to remove it, Mom said. Why do you want to know so bad? Mom shrugged. I'm a man that likes to know things. I've never seen a pip buck like that before, and you did tell me they were special. So I want to see what the big deal is. Come on. It's not like I'm going to take the damned thing. It's not like I'd get far. Fine. But if you even try and take it, I'll cut your head off and put it on a pike, Dust Devil said. Are you sure you're a stable mare? You act more like a raider. You know that, right? Kiss my ass, Grim, and watch. I'm not showing you twice, she said, pulling out a pip buck master key from her pocket in her coat. It's simple. The Mark II's can all be removed by the one who wears it. Also, you need a pip buck master key. And you have to enter the passcode onto it. Sounds like a lot of work to get a pip buck off, Mom said. But she watched the mare as she used the key on the pip buck. Once she was done, she did something on her Mark II, then set into it. Heart music. Then the latch of the pip buck appeared. Dust Devil unlatched it and removed the Mark II. There. You see? Mom reached out and ran a hoof over the silver finish as Dust Devil set it down on the table. Is it true that the Mach 2 can hide information inside of it? She nodded. Rusty says so. I've never read too much into the manual myself. He had to because of his old job in the Stable 9. Once we settled Trotston, he put me in charge of security here, but he gave this to me the day we left the Stable 9. It used to belong to a rover mare. What happened to your old stable anyway? None of the ponies here ever seemed to want to talk about it, Mom said as she kept running her hooves over the Mark II. Most around here don't like to think about those days. When I was young, it happened. It was all because of one filly and a mad doctor, Dust Devil said after she yawned. I heard that Bloodwings were in the stable. There was only a few of them, yeah, but they ain't nothing like the ones you see out here. They're smarter and faster, but they weren't the reason we had to run. She said as she quickly took a drink from some amber liquid. 
A filly was hurt badly a few hours before. Dr. Sal used some kind of fucked up magic or potion he'd created to turn the filly into some kind of monster. She had wings like a bat, long fangs like a blood wing, and she had scales all over her chest and belly. Bone claws were on her hooves and eyes like a dragon. He sicked his monster on the stable after killing the overmare. Honestly, we got lucky. Getting attacked is lucky? Mom asked. No. That our overmare was a unicorn like you. She had a strange ability to know what was going to happen. Well, not exactly what would happen, but she could guess when something bad was coming. So she gave her pet buck to Rusty and told him to keep it safe. Because of that, Rusty was ready when the attack happened, and he was able to get most of us out. He had me put the Mark II where we left and use it to steal the, steal the stable so that Dr. Cell and his monster could never escape. Dust Devil said, Sounds sad if you ask me. A poor filly was forced to become a monster, then made to attack her own stable ponies. Even worse was that she was the Overmare's daughter. Her name was Wind Thrasher. How did she get wings? I've never heard of any pony being able to give wings to another before. She was a Pegasus, Dust Devils said. The first one born in our stable. She was a shy thing, always playing with the vampire fruit bats in the lower levels. I find it sad that Dr. Cell changed her into such a bloodthirsty thing, when she used to be such a sweetie and kind soul. I agree. At least Rusty was able to save all the Mark IIs when he got out, my mother clarified. Dust Devil chuckled. Saved them all? No. Dr. Cell still has his, for all I know. Doesn't matter, though. Honestly, the Mark II isn't that great. Not sure why Stable Tech wanted us to keep him safe. Mom smiled. Because one of them was used to lock down a project. They were trying to keep it hidden from ponies like me. Dust Devil looked confused. Ponies like you? What are you talking about? Mom pulled the Mark II close to herself and latched it onto her own foreleg before Dust Devil could do anything. Sorry, Dust Devil. But the only reason I came to Trotston was to get this. You see, this Mark II is the one I needed to save my daughter. It's the good thing you're such a moron that you made a bet with me to take it off. Give that back, Grim! Dust Devil yelled. Mom got to her hooves. Sorry, can't do that. But thanks again for showing me how it works. She used her magic to grab the master key then. With a chuckle, she started back towards the door. Remember this next time you decide to make stupid bets. I'll kill you, Grim, Dust Devil said. I warned you, I'd cut your head off and put it on a spike. Mom's grin widened as she started to draw on her magic. If you try, I'll make sure to leave your head on your front doorstep. See you later, Mom said before teleporting away. The last thing I saw in the memory was Bite's mother lunging for Mom as she vanished in a flash of blue light. A new memory started, with Mom sitting in a cave while me sleeping by a small fire. She was fiddling with the Mark II. From the corner of her eye, I could see a dead griffin by the cave mouth, just out of sight of my sleeping form. As she fiddled with the Mark II, Shadows pulled away from the cave, and a moment later, Uncle Ori was standing in front of her. Still having problems with the Red Talons? Mom looked up at him, and then shrugged. That bitch from Trotston keeps sending them after me. You'd think they'd stop the contract after I killed five griffins. Ori Callus looked back at the dead griffin. I hope that Star didn't see you kill him. She's been sleeping. She had a bad day. It took me twice as long to push the darkness back today. Also, start calling her Morning Star. He just rolled his eyes. I still don't like that name for her. Too bad, Mom said as she kept working on the pip buck. I decided it fits her, and I'm not changing it. If you say so. Mom sighed and lowered the mark, too. What do you want, Pride? I was checking up on you for starters. Also, I wanted to warn you that steel rangers have been spotted near here. I know. I'm meeting with one of them. You're what? Orikalis said. 
Don't give me that. I have my reasons, Mom said defensively. And those reasons are... I need their help if I'm going to find this project. I can't do it on my own, and you can't stay around me all the time to help. They have a lot of tech and knowledge. A new elder for the Las Olicorn branch is meeting with me today, so he can help me in my search. Mom said. I'm sure he'll just take what he wants for himself. Mom just shrugged. He can try to take it, but the director wants it too, and she's the one I trust. She's the one who told me to work with them. I don't trust her or the Steel Rangers. I don't trust any pony anymore apart from you, Pride. But I'll use them as long as I have to. Now, did you see anything else apart from the Rangers? Mom asked. No. Fine. Now, can you help me with this mare from Trotston? Well, if you need her to drop the contract, I can do that, he said. Works for me. I did say that if she came after me, I'd put her head on the porch of her home. Mom said, going back to the Mark II. Sounds like fun. I'll head that way and help her to understand how stupid she's been. Horikala said. Shadows started to flow off his body. See that you do, Mom said with a wave of her hoof. Horikala melted into the shadows, saying, I'll see you in a few days, sis. Stay safe. You too, Pride, Mom said, not even looking up from her work. Another memory started with Mom standing on a hill near a place I don't remember seeing. I understood why a minute later when Mom took my sleeping form off her back and gently sat me next to her. Either I slept a lot when I was younger or Mom put a sleeping charm on me whenever she needed to meet with ponies. I wouldn't put a pastor to do the latter. Mom turned as two power-armored ponies walked up to her. One I knew as soon as I saw the armor. Elder Wolfsbane stood a few feet away from the ranger next to him, keeping a gun trained on Mom. Mom rolled her eyes. Crackerjack, do you always have to do that when we meet? I figured by now you'd have a little more trust in me. It's hard to trust a pony who doesn't tell us about her past, Crackerjack said. Wolfsbane just sighed. Crackerjack, lower your weapons. Grim is correct. She's shown us that we can trust her. Crackerjack did. Yes, yeah, sir, but I don't know why you trust her so much. Wolfsbane ignored him and stepped out of his power armor. He looked a lot younger than when I first met him. He also didn't have a scar over his face. He's quite handsome. If he wasn't a backstabbing, murdering asshole who we should have thrown into the deepest, darkest pit of the ocean while trapped in his power armor. Tell me what you learned, Wolfsbane said as he walked closer to Mom. Not much, sadly. I was able to get into the old base and past both of the locks, but the control room was destroyed a long time ago. I found a few files I was able to copy to my pip-buck, but there's nothing in them about falling shadows. Only a couple of object, or projects that were scrapped, Mom said. Wolfsbane looked irritated. I thought that you said the information would be down there. You told me everything about the projects was in that location. No, I said that it might be, Mom retorted. Maybe that guardian pony took him? Cracker Jack asked. He wouldn't do that. Also, he doesn't know about falling shadows. All he thinks that location is, is a source of power for something, Mom said. You know what I find interesting? That every time one of us brings up this stallion, you always defend him, Grim. Why is that? Wolfsbane said. Because I know him. I've already told you this, Elder Wolfsbane. And yet you still won't tell me who he is. Because it doesn't matter for the mission. He's not a problem for us. I don't want him getting mixed into all this. He's part of the Enclave. None of them are good ponies, Grim. Cracker Jack said, laughing. Mom's horn started to glow as she said, You don't know anything about the ponies from the Enclave, Cracker Jack. Not all of them are bad ponies. A lot of them are better than most steel rangers I've met, including you. Calm down, Grim, Wolfsbane said. Either way, is there anything that we can use from down there? There was only one thing I could see being useful, but it might be almost impossible to make the project work. And 
What is that? It's a project called Solar Flare. It was a weapon started by a mayor called Professor Augustine. It was a megaspell that's part of a satellite. It uses something called a rangefinder to work. From the notes that Minette kept on the project, it was completed. The power it should have could take out a town. But it takes 24 hours to recharge, Mom said. Wolfsbane seemed interested in that information. With that kind of firepower, I could use it to keep a lot of factions in line. Do you know where this rangefinder is? Mom shook her head. No, but even if I did, the program in Halo 1 would have to be activated first. That's where the program is located and where the signal is sent up to the satellite. There's always a catch. Still, if we could find the rangefinder, getting the program to start shouldn't be too bad. I'll see what I can find on my end of things, Wolf Spain said. Anything else you need before I head out? I need more resources near New Pegasus if I'm ever going to find out more information about Falling Shadows. I also need a safer place to keep Morningstar safe while I work, Mom said. I had a feeling this would happen, Wolf Spain said. Luckily, I've already been working on a plan for this. As you know, Crackerjack works here within the Hidden Sands branch of the Steel Rangers as my eyes and ears. I'm going to have you help him in there and have them join you. How is this going to work? They don't trust any random wastelander to join up, Mom asked. <laughs> Luckily for you, the elder of that branch is an old fool who is far too kind to be an elder. With Cracker Jack's help, you'll be able to get in, but you'll need to play the part of a helpless mare. But still show how smart you really are. Mom sighed. If it will help me find this project sooner rather than later, then fine. Good. Cracker Jack will send you a message in a few days. Make sure you're ready along with your filly, Wolfsbane said, looking back to his power armor and getting into it. Also, Grim. If you find out anything about this Solar Flare project, I want you to tell me right away. Grim nodded. Yes, Elder Wolfsbane. Good mare, he said with a laugh. Let's go, Cracker Jack. I need to get back before I'm seen. The two turned and left without another word to Mom. She waited for a long moment, then picked me up with her magic, while also teleporting to a place that I knew better. In the distance, I could see the lucky horseshoe poking out from the horizon far in the distance. She took in a deep breath. I hope you can take a couple more of these, sweetie, she said, then teleported again. She appeared near an old cave, Halo 1 now visible in the distance. Then she teleported one more time, now the power station was not far off. She quickly pulled me off her back and started to check my vitals. When she was satisfied that her quick teleportation hadn't made me sick, she walked over to an area close to the fence to the power station where a few walks were poking out of the ground. She first checked to make sure that no pony was watching. Then she used a spell to crack one open and hollow it out. Let's hope this works, she said as she reached into her saddlebags and pulled out Solar Flare's rangefinder. How the hell did she find that? Also, if she had that, then why didn't she tell Wolfsbane about it and give it to him? She placed the rangefinder into the hollowed out rock, then used another spell to replace the split part, the rock, back over the hollowed out part. Then she cast another spell to move sand over most of the rock to further help hide it. When she was finished, she sighed and sat down next to the pile of rocks, lifting her pip buck and opening the broadcaster. Director, are you out there? Mom said into the Mark II. It took a minute, but then the director said, I'm here, Grim. What's going on? Mom smiled. Wolf Spain did just as you said. I'll be joining the Hidden Rangers soon. But I did have to tell him about Solar Flare. You didn't give him the weapon, did you? No. I've hidden it for now. I'm going to see if I can get the Hidden Sands to take over Halo 1, so I can see about shutting it down for good. I'm glad to hear that, Grim. What else did you find while you were in the base? Mom's smile grew as she used her magic to pull my sleeping form closer. The information was there, just like you said. I know that what I have to do next. The memory faded and was replaced by one of Mom yelling. Stay down, Shadow. And help keep close to me. 
Mom was attacking a manticore as it charged up the small hill she was on. The plasma didn't seem to do much against it, apart from make it angrier. She started to activate a spell when a huge pony in power armor slammed into the monster from the side, throwing it back down against the hill. Mom looked over at him, saying, About time you showed up, Crackerjack. Couldn't be helped. I had to make sure the others were able to follow my trail. You okay? He said, sounding a lot nicer than when I knew the Steel Ranger turned Raider Boss. Why did you have to make it a manticore? A ghoul horde would have been easier. Mom asked as she shot a blast of magic down the monster. It ducked the attack and tried to charge them again, but Crackerjack bucked it back down the hill. I had to make sure of her vein and the paladin didn't think it was a trap. And a manticore seemed like a good idea to make this not look like a trap. Mom asked. Only a fool would set a trap against a manticore. He said through his helmet. Well, then you're a fucking fool, Crackerjack. You do realize that my daughter's here, right? She'll be fine. Just keep that thing from getting up here. The team shouldn't be too far away. And you're sure they'll help? Seeing that you have a pip buck and a beautiful plasma rifle and you're fighting with me, yeah, I'm sure. He said as she opened fire against the manticore. The thing just kept dodging, making slow ground towards us. Then a loud boom filled the air, and one of the manticore's paws was blasted off. The monster screamed, then turned towards two other steel rangers who were at the bottom of the hill. The shorter one's guns pointed up at the beast, and Vervain's voice echoed out of the helmet. Oh, shut up, you ugly fuck! Then she blew its head off with a large gun. The body twitched, then slumped forward, and slowly slid down the hill. I could feel my small body shivering in fright against Mom's hind leg. The two steel rangers walked up to Mom and Crackerjack, Vervain saying, Crackerjack, what happened here? Do you know how long we've been looking for you? Then you should have kept up, Crackerjack said. Thank you ever so much for the help, ma'am, Mom said, sounding pathetic even to my ears. Vervain looked over at my mom. Who are you, and why are you out here alone? My daughter and I are new to this area. We got lost, and this kind ranger helped us when that thing attacked. Mom said. The stallion next to her laughed. <laughs> Crackerjack! Kind! That's a new one. Fuck you, Crackerjack said. Vervain ignored both of them, saying to Mom, You're just lucky we showed up when we did. Now, if I were you, I'd head towards a settlement. The wasteland isn't a place for a mare like you to be alone. Night Vervain. The manticore wasn't the only reason I helped her, Crackerjack said. Look on her foreleg. The other two steel rangers looked down at Mom's pip buck. Vervain asked, What kind of pip buck is that? I've never seen anything like it. I... I found it on a dead mare outside of Trotston a few weeks back. I put it on, since I heard they can help you in a fight, but now I can't get it off. Mom said, sounding even more pathetic. The stallion with Ravain pushed past her, asking, Did you say you got that near Trotston? Mom nodded. Yeah, a few weeks back. I figured the dead mare wouldn't need it anymore. It says it's a Pip Buck 3000 Mark II. I was able to figure out a few things with it. I don't think it's a normal Pip Buck. The stallion cursed. So Trotston does have those prototypes we read about. Elder Applejam was right. Seems so, Vervain said. Miss, um... Mom bowed her head a little. Grimoire spell. You can call me Grimoire if you want. This is my daughter, Morningstar. Vervain looked at me. Um, hello, Morningstar. I backed behind Mom more. She's scary. Vane reached up and took off her helmet. Once she did, she smiled a little. Sometimes I have to be scary to keep the monsters away. But really, I'm nice. I'm sorry that we scared you. It's... okay. I said shyly. Vane looked back at Mom. Grim, huh? Where are you trying to get to, Grim? No place right now. I'd like, I said, we're new around here. Mom said... Hmm. You know what? 
That pip puck seems interesting, but you said you can't take it off, right? Ravane asked. I even tried to use a pip puck master key, but it didn't work. The stallion nudged Ravane. Come on, Knight Ravane. We don't have time to talk. Kill the mare, take the pip buck, and leave the kid to fend for herself. Before Mom could react to the coldness in the buck's voice, she rounded on him. No! We don't go around killing ponies because we're in a hurry. Then she looked at Mom. Sorry about him. Since you can't get it off and you seem to need a place to stay, how would you like to come back to Hidden Sands with us? We can provide you and your daughter a safe place to live and may be able to get you some work. Not a bad idea, Cracker Jack said. What's the catch? Mom asked. Ravane smiled wide. All I want is a chance to look over that mark, too. Do that for me, and I'll talk to our elder about letting you stay. Mom looked over at Cracker Jack for just a moment, then said, Deal. Another memory started. Mom was sitting in an office that I recognized. It was one that used to belong to Elder Appleslice. But right now, it was the old kind buck I knew when I was young, Elder Applejam. He was giving Mom a kind smile as he said, Vervain says you're quite the fighter. I just shrugged. I've learned to take care of myself, but I wouldn't say I'm much of a fighter, sir. Elder, Elder Applejam said. Sorry, Elder, I mean. It's okay. I know it's not easy for ponies who didn't grow up around the Steel Rangers. So tell me, Miss Spell, what brings you all the way out to the Merave? I'm looking for something that can cure my daughter. She was hurt when she was very young and suffers every day with a bad heart. And what makes you think you will find something out here to help her? I've done my research and I believe there's an old pre-war project that can be used to help her. Ah, I see. Have you ever found anything yet since you arrived? Elder Applejam asked. Mom shook her head. No, not yet. I've only been around here for a couple of weeks. Once my daughter and I are rested up, we'll be heading towards freedom. He sat back in his chair, watching her, as he said. Interesting idea. Though, I think that making a sick filly travel around New Pegasus with you does sound dangerous. She'll be fine. I can't just leave her in some random place while I search. I'm the only pony who knows the spell to keep her alive. Mom said. Is that something that can be taught to another unicorn? He asked. If they have the right kind of gifts for magic, then yes. The spell itself isn't difficult. Why do you ask? Mom asked. I ask because I believe that you would be a good idea for you to join us. We could help keep your daughter healthy while you travel around the area looking for this project of yours. Mom frowned. And why would I join the Steel Rangers? Even if I did, what did you gain? A smart mare, for one. Also, I'd like to have my scribe study that pip buck of yours. Small trade to make when it comes to safety of your daughter, don't you think? Mom pulled her left foreleg close to herself. I can't let you have this pip buck. I need it to activate the project once I find it. Are you sure about that? He asked. Yes. All of the notes I've found about the project say that it was locked down with a silver mark too. It's the only thing that can unlock it and save my daughter. He took a minute to think, then chuckled to himself. I must be getting old. Fine. How about this one? Once you've done with this quest of yours, then would you be willing to give us this pip buck? You wouldn't need it anymore, right? I guess not. Though I'm starting to get rather attached to it. <laughs> I'm not surprised. You strike me as a mare who likes knowing things. Mom chuckled a little. You have no idea. Before my daughter got sick, I used to work with a research department in... She stopped before she could say where she was from. Elder Applejam wasn't a stupid pony, though. He looked at her with more interest than before. You know, we've got reports a month or so back about a blue unicorn escaping the Enclave up north. Funny thing was, she had a little filly with her that was very sick. Mom's heart seemed to stop. Where did you hear something like that? 
A report we got back to us that the Steel Rangers were being blamed for killing two Pegasi a little outside of Winnapolis. The strange thing is, Steel Rangers never venture that close to Enclave territory. Mom Sworn started to glow as she said, I can't have any pony knowing. He put up a hoof. Don't worry, I'm not going to tell any pony. Mom dropped her magic, asking, Why would you do that? Steel Rangers hate Enclave. If you ran from them because you needed to save your daughter, risking death itself to do so, then I have no reason to fear you, Miss Bell. Elder Applejam said simply. So you'll just up and trust a mare from the Enclave? That could be a spy, she said. He shrugged. I doubt that. Not with a sick filly. I'll make you a deal. Work with us, become a scribe for the Steel Rangers, and I'll keep your secret about where you came from. But I can't just take a job with you and risk my daughter dying. I don't expect you to. I'll let you keep working on finding this project. All I ask is that you let me know where you are going when you head out. If I have a message for you, mission for you that way, then I'll have you take care of it for us. After you're done with your own work, of course, he said. I... I don't know, Mom said. Think about it this way. Your daughter will be safe, fed, and have a place to sleep every night. We'll make sure that she gets a good education. Maybe teach her to defend herself. And there will be a scribe that knows the spell of yours to keep her healthy. It will free you up so you can find this project a lot quicker. You'd really do that for me? I would. I couldn't live with myself if I let a mother and her sick daughter just leave this place and later find out they died in the wasteland when I could have done something to help her. Mom smiled a little. Okay, as long as you keep your side of the deal. Also, I would like to have my plasma rifle back. It's a family heirloom. He chuckled. I think I can manage that. I'll have Ravane show you around. She's the daughter of a very good friend of mine, and she loves foals. If I were you, I'd make friends with her. She's one of those friends that only comes along in a once-a-lifetime. Mom's smile fell a little. I'll try, but I think that kind of friend's already come and gone for me. Well, maybe you're lucky enough to have two of those kinds of friends, he said with a wink. Mom just laughed. I guess that's possible. A new memory started with Mom sitting in a cave with her pip buck up, talking to some pony on the Mark II's broadcaster. So, how are you liking your new job, Stormy? Oh, Grim, you have no idea how busy they're keeping me here, but I love it. Though, I don't know where I'm going to do when I when my leave time's up in the Crystal Empire. I'm not even sure the director would ever let me leave, since I know where this place is. I heard Stormy's voice say. She knows that you can be trusted. You've been there for two months now, and from what I hear, you've been making huge strides for the projects. Mom said, leaning against the wall of the cave. Yes, I have. I may be onto something with this whole Gen 3 synth. They had most of the basics down, and they just couldn't seem to get the ponies they made to act like real everyday ponies. That's more your area than mine. I would have no idea how to do any of that. Mom said with a chuckle. Your area always has been magical research and new spell work. I've always been fascinated by robotics and the thought of androids. Though, since the new generation doesn't seem to have anything mechanical in them apart from a small chip in their heads, I'm not sure I can call them androids, Stormy said. I still can't believe that you got me a position here. How did you even find them? They found me. The director somehow found out about Star and wanted to help. So, she also thinks that I'm the only one who can find this prowling, falling shadows project. Though I'm not sure how I will. So far, all I've been able to learn is some small things about a pip buck. It has nothing to do, nothing on it, about falling shadows, though. So I keep it, then. Pip bucks are so old-fashioned and tacky, Stormy said, signing board. It has its uses, and I think this Mark II was used to lock falling shadows. But it could have just as easily been locked down with a lot of other projects, such as EC-1101. What on Equus is EC-1101? Some project I found, 
in some old notes of Strikers. It's a program that moves around and can be used to unlock projects. I've heard it's also referred to as the Key of Equestria. Rom said with a sigh. Sounds more promising than the Mark II thing. Why not go find that? It's been lost since the war ended. Last place I think it ended up is Hoofington, though I'm not sure where. Hoofington, huh? Now there's a place I'd hate to go, Stormy said. Anyway, enough talk about the doom and gloom of our task with the Ministry. Grim. Tell me, how are you liking working with those Steel Ranger ponies? It's not so bad. I've made a good friend named Vervain, and she's helping me on my quest to find the Falling Shadows. Star keeps calling her Auntie Vervain. It's cute. She's really taking a liking to her. Mom said with a smile. Well, at least it's not as bad as I thought. How's Star doing, by the way? Six months with his rangers, and getting rest has helped. I haven't had to use the spell on her as often. Though I think it might just be a matter of time before she gets worse again. Mom said. The poor little thing. I do hope you find this project soon and can help fix her. I do too. Though once she's better, I don't know what I'll do. I'm sure by now there's no way we can ever go back to home. I'm not even sure I want to at this point. I feel so much more alive since I've come to the Wasteland, Mom said. What about Nightshade? Don't you miss him? Stormy asked. Every day. But he won't leave the Enclave. Even for Star or me. Well then, at least you'll still have me. I'll stick by your side forever if I must. Stormy said dramatically. What would I do without you, Stormy? You'd be a boring old mare. Old? Mom asked. Okay, maybe not old, but still boring. But at least you're cute, Stormy said. You'll never give up with that, will you? Mom asked with a chuckle. If I did, you'd think I was sick or something. Or finally found your wits, Mom replied. Bah, who needs that? Life's so much more fun this way. The sound of who stepping over gravel echoed into the cave. Mom sighed. Sounds like Favane is back. I'll contact you in a week or so. Oh, fine. Now you be a good mare and stay out of trouble. Good night, Stormy. Mom said with a chuckle. That's Dr. Stormy now, Grim. And good night. Don't worry, I'll be thinking of you as I take my shower. She teased, then cut off the connection. Mom just chuckled and shook her head. Then looked towards the entrance of the cave where a pony in power armor was walking in. Irvane's voice echoed out of the helmet. Who are you talking to? Just checking in with a contact of mine, Mom said, getting back to her hooves. Did you find anything? Yeah, that old shack definitely is more than it seems. It's safe, if you want to come check it out with me. Sounds good. Let's go. Mom said, following her vein as the memory faded away. The new memory started with Mom looking over old papers on a desk in the Steel Ranger bunker. I was sleeping on a small bed next to hers, Vervain standing next to the desk, her power armor off. Mom looked up at her. Are you sure this is correct? As far as I know. I am not sure how our contact got these, but he said they were in some old files in Stratus. Vervain said. I was lucky that the Pegasus was willing to uh, go up there and risk his life for them. Is it the information on Falling Shadows you were looking for? No. What? That moron couldn't even give me the right information, Vervain said. It's okay, Vervain. It's better than okay. Mom said as she looked over the paper titled Project Stargazer, a.k.a. Aquila. What do you mean? I was wrong the whole time. This is the project that I need. I always knew that Falling Shadows was something to do with magic pulled down from the stars, but Stargazer is the real one I need. After looking through my notes, Falling Shadows is the project that followed a failed project. I never found the name of the former one, but this has to be it. Does that mean you can use it to help Morning? Vervain asked. If the power is still trapped in the lab, then yes. I found notes on how to contain star magic in one of my old books. If I go there with Morningstar, I should be able to use this power to heal her. Ravane hugged Mom tightly. That's amazing, Grim. I hope it all works out. If so, be sure to get a message to me. 
Mom pulled away, confused. What do you mean? I figured, with all the help you've given me over the past year and a half, that you'd want to come with. I do. But Elder Applejam is sending me on an undercover mission to that stable laser light found, Vervain said. Stable 28? A stable down the road from your hometown? Why does he want you to go there? Mom asked. We believe that they are making new kinds of weapons and armor. One of the contacts in Cartwheel was sold one from one of the traders. He needs me to go because I'm the only pony here who's a scribe and a knight. I can protect myself and still understand what's going on in Stable 28. Damn. I was hoping you'd go with me. Vervain took a moment to think. Do you know where this Project Stargazer is? Not yet, but I'm sure I can find it. Then let's, let's see what happens in the next few weeks. I'm sure I won't be in Stable 28 for more than a few weeks. Once you find the location, let me know and I'll make sure I can work it out to help. Vervain said. Okay, I'll do just that. Mom said with a smile. Just make sure you stay safe, okay? I will. Vervain said, turning to leave. Another memory started. Mom was talking with Vervain as they headed to Quartwheel. Are you sure this mare will have the information I need? I mean, she's just a clothing merchant. Yes, but the supple cloak used to be an explorer and scavenger when she was younger. Before she had a daughter and settled down in Cartwheel, she used to adventure all over. If any pony has a map and info on the lab, she will. If you say so. I guess Morning and I will be back in a little while, Mom said as she headed into Cartwheel. It was hard for me to watch as Mom walked through the town I grew to love. In only a few years, this place would be reduced to nothing but destroyed buildings and dead ponies. Mom did her best to smile and say hello to the ponies she passed as she walked past them, heading towards where Silver Snip's shop was. I was on her back, resting a little as she worked her way through the town. Finally, she walked in the door and set me down, saying, Will you be okay here for a few minutes, little star? I think so, Mommy. My chest hurts, though. I said in a weak voice. I know. Just relax, and you'll feel better soon. Mom said, patting my head. Okay, Mommy. Mom turned away from me and walked over to the mare at the counter as a little red filly walked past, heading towards where I was sitting. When Mom reached the counter, the mare, who had to be Silver Cloak, Silver Snip's mother, looked up and asked in a bored tone, Can I help you? Yes, I'm here to see about getting a map, Mom said. Silver Cloak got an irritated look on her face. Does this look like a store that sells maps? Can you read the sign over the door? Or are you just another illiterate mare trying to get yourself killed in the wasteland? Mom tilted her head. Not one for the kind shop owner act, are you? I don't have time to deal with ponies that can't read. This is a shop for armor. If you need that, then I can help you. If not, get the fuck out of my store, Supple Cloak said. Mom looked back at me and saw I was distracted talking to Silver Snip. Then she turned back toward Supple Cloak and pulled her plasma rifle off her back. Listen here. I know that you sell maps of places that you've been when you are still a scavenger. I need one for that MAS EBS tower just outside of town. I need to know how to get up to it, where the entrance is, what to expect around the area, and if you found any doors into a lab. She just rolled her eyes. Please. I'm not that scared of you or that. No pony would just outright kill another when their daughter was in the room. Mom grinned a little. Want to risk your life on that? I'm with the Hidden Sand Rangers. Vervain sent me to get this information. If you don't do as I ask, then I'll kill you and take it for myself. Not a lot of places in this dump to hide it. Fine. Whatever. The mayor turned towards a wall safe. Fucking Vervain, going around telling strangers what I used to do. Mom holstered her plasma rifle. So, how old's your daughter? Fuck if I can remember. Subblecloak said as she opened the safe and pulled out a few papers. You don't know how old your own daughter is? Mom asked, sounding confused. Subblecloak turned and slammed the papers down on the desk. 
I can't remember every drunken night I opened my legs for a stallion, let alone when I gave birth to a worthless child with no talent. Now that'll be 5,000 caps for the info, then you can get out of my shop and tell Vivane to keep a muzzle shut about my maps. I could feel Mom's body tensing up as she said, No child is useless. First of all, it's none of your business. Second of all, first, fuck you. Supple Cloak said, I'm gonna pay up and leave. I could feel Mom doing her best not to draw on her magic as she took a deep breath to calm herself. Fine. She tossed the caps on the counter, grabbing the map. Hey, this isn't the right number of caps. My mother looked back at Supple Cloak and grinned. I only paid you for what I think you're worth. You're lucky you even got anything. You bitch. Supple Cloak was about to attack Mom, but Mom stopped her with her magic, suspending her in midair. No, no, no. You said it yourself. No pony would kill another pony with their daughter in the room. I can feel Mom's magic make its way up to Supple Cloak's neck, slightly choking her. Just a word of advice. I don't need your advice, she said, trying to speak. Mom tightened her hold around Supple Cloak's neck, her eyes a little bloodshot from lack of oxygen. You're a mother. Act like it. I can see that your daughter is thin. She needs to eat more. Cartwheel's a prosperous town, and I know that you have more than enough to feed her. And no child is useless. May have more potential than you ever know if you would just treat them with a little bit of kindness. When I come back through town, I better see her looking better. If not... I'll cut off your head and feed what's left of you to a hellhound. Do you understand me? The mare's bloodshot eyes were full of fear as she looked into Mom's gray eyes. Then she nodded. Fine. Now let me go. Her voice still strained. Mom released hold of Supple Cloak and picked up the maps and headed towards Silver and me. The next memory I knew all too well. I watched from Mom's point of view as we entered Stargazer's lab. It was difficult and different to see what happened from where she was, and I understood why she was so scared when Aquila attacked me. One moment I was yelling at a ball of light. There was a flash of light, followed by blackness blasting out of my body as Aquila purified it. From my mom's perspective, my body floated in the air. My silver coat turned black, my mane going silver. In an instant, I went from being the sick little star that Mom loved to a different pony altogether. When I passed out from the pain of having darkness purged, Mom held me close to her, checking to see if I was still alive. Ravane running over, asking, What happened, Grim? I'm not sure, but she's still breathing and I can feel her heart beating. Strong. What about her illness? Mom set me down and tried to use her light spell. Like before, she was able to see through me, but my heart looked healthy. Not a single scrap of darkness was left. She's... cured. Ravane smiled widely. Grim, that's amazing! Mom stopped her spell, but she didn't smile or show signs of happiness. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? She's going to be okay! Ravane said. What happened to Aquila? I... I don't know, Ravane admitted. Mom started to use spells to look through my body. Then she started to look through my memories and mind. At first, there was nothing to see. Then she saw it. A speck of light deep inside my mind, weak from having to hold back the darkness, but still there. Mom gasped and drew away. She's inside Star. And that creature's inside of her. Mom nodded. It merged with her somehow, but it's weak for curing this morning Star. But... Even now, I can see it's forcing itself deeper into her. Mom said, using another spell to try and pull Aquila out. Aquila just pushed herself deeper inside of me. As Mom tried to pull harder, Aquila said weakly, Try to whip me out all you want, Grim. But Morningstar and I have a deal. No matter what you do, I am part of her now. Get out of my daughter! Mom yelled again, trying to rip the creature out of my mind. It won't work. All the magic in Equus can't remove me from her now that we're one. But don't worry. You'll have a few years to enjoy your time with her before I take her over. Aquila said, vanishing inside the depths of my mind. Mom slammed her hoof down on the table. Damn it! 
Vervain looked scared. What happened, Grim? I don't know yet, but I intend to find out. Get back to the stable. I'll be there soon. You're still going to Stable 28? Vervain asked. Yes, I need a clinic so I can look over Morningstar and make sure that she's okay. Then I need time to research everything I can about this place and what they wanted here. Just get me into the stable so I can do what I need to. I'll make sure to also take care of your problem with the ponies there. Okay, just be careful, Ravane said as she turned to leave the lab. Mom waited for her to go, then she turned back towards my limp form. I'll find a way to get you out, Aquila. But for now, I have time. First, I need to destroy what's left of this place. Mom picked me up with her magic, then started drawing zebra glyphs in magic circles around the lab. Once she was done, she took everything she could from the lab so she could use them later. With that finished, she walked out of the room and activated the spell. Right as it started to go off, the magic circles started to glow. She shut the door behind us. As Mom slowly walked up the steps, a muted boom echoed from the lab. Mom never even flinched or looked back. A new memory started again. I was starting to wonder how many more of these there were and why they mattered so much when I noticed that Mom was running down the dark tunnel towards Stable 28's door. When she reached it, she started pounding on the door. I need help! Please! My daughter was attacked out here and I need a doctor! She kept banging on the door, then moved over to the switch that opened the large door and started pushing the small button that activated the intercom. Please! Somebody help me! She's hurt! She pulled back a little, whispering to herself, Come on, Vervain. Don't leave me out here. Finally, a mare's voice echoed out of the intercom. Who is this, and how did you find this stable? It sounded like the overmare. Not the one I grew up with, but her mother. I found it by chance. I was lost on the road, got chased by ghouls into the Green Mist Valley. My daughter started having problems breathing and passed out. I ran for the closest cave to hide from the ghouls and saw the stable door. I'm begging you. She's all I have. Mom pleaded. I was kind of amazed at how good of an actress she was. If I didn't know she was planning this with Verbane, I'd have thought it was real. Then I heard Verbane like she was standing next to the Overmare. Overmare? If she has a filly, we can't just turn her away. We don't normally let in strange mares, the Overmare said through the intercom. I know, Overmare. But you did let me in, and I've proved to be useful. Maybe she can be as well, Ravain responded. Mom banged her hoof on the intercom. If she doesn't get help, she'll die. I'll do anything. Please. I'm sorry, but our stable can't risk it. You'll have to leave. If you head back the road, there's a town, not... Ravain, what are you doing? The Overmare yelled. A moment later, the stable door started to pull out of its slot and opened. As soon as it started to open, Mom brought the Mark II up and started going through the screens. She went to one I hadn't noticed on it before. She did so fast, I barely noticed what she was doing. Next thing I know, she pulled the master key out of her saddlebags and said to her pit buck, Shine bright! The Mark II unlocked, and a moment later, she was stowing it into her saddlebags right as the door finished opening. Mom ran for the open door and was only stopped by three security ponies. Behind them, the old Overmare and Vervain up at the control switch. The Overmare, who I remembered as being kind, if a bit lazy like her daughter, looked pissed. Vervain, how dare you open the door? Vervain looked over at the Overmare. Yell at me later, but I'm not going to let a mare and her filly die out there. This is my stable, Vervain, not yours. Then she looked at my mom. You'll have to leave. Mom's horn glowed, and a moment later, the rifles and battle saddles on the security ponies were ripped away and held over Mom's head. I'm not going to do anything, but I'm not letting you send me into the wasteland again until the doctor looks at my daughter. The overmare looked down at Mom, then at me, passed out on her back, her eyes going soft. How bad is she? I'm a researcher and a magical, magical specialist, not a doctor. I have no idea. But she's been out for hours. Please, I'm begging you. Mom pleaded. The security ponies all looked up at the Overmare and Vervain, one asking, What's her orders, Overmare? 
I saw Vervain nod her head at Mom, almost like she was trying to tell Mom to do something. Mom must have understood, because while the security ponies were looking away from Mom, she cast a spell, right at the Overmare. Her eyes glazed over for a moment while they did. Another security pony asked, You okay, Madam Overmare? She shook her head, then looked at Vervain. Didn't you tell me that when you last went out, you ran into a unicorn that helped you escape an attack? Vervain nodded. That's right. She was the only reason I survived, even if my escort didn't. I didn't catch her name, though. Mom looked up at Vervain. Wait, you're the mare I helped the other day, aren't you? The one who was attacked by that manticore near Cartwheel? The overmare looked back at Mom. Her eyes were still a little unfocused, as she said. Let her in. And get her to the clinic. Keep an eye on her. But make sure her daughter gets what she needs. I'll be along shortly after I talk to Vervain so I can talk to this mare more. One of the security ponies asked, You're just going to let a unicorn into our stable? We can't let a filly die because you're too scared to let a unicorn in. Now do as you're told. They all nodded, and Mom gave them back their weapons. A mare nodded her head towards the atrium just beyond them. Follow me, ma'am. We'll see that you're taken care of. Just don't let me catch that horn glowing. Do that, and we'll keep our weapons off you. Thank you so much, Mom said as she walked up the steps as Vervain closed the stable door. When she joined the security ponies, Mom took one last look at Vervain, who nodded with a slight smile. Before they could get past the door, however, the overmare asked Mom, What's your daughter's name? When Mom looked at the overmare, I could see she was looking at my sleeping form on Mom's back. Ma, I mean Shadow. Shadow Star. There were definitely a lot of memories to go through, but I couldn't understand what my mom wanted me to see. The next memory showed mom in the clinic with Doc. He was standing in one corner, cowering as red magic flew through the room, destroying instruments and his tools. In the middle of the room, I was standing there with my eyes glowing red as magic exploded from my horn and a voice that was not my own was laughing. So much power inside this one! Mom had a magical shield up as she slowly pushed towards me. Aquila! I, or I guess Aquila, looked over at Mom. Grim, what do you think you can do to stop me? Your daughter let me in, you fool. Stupid child thought she could make a deal with me. I would have lived up to it, but she just can't seem to pull herself out of her dark memories and the pain she felt for so long. Let my daughter go! Mom yelled, pushing closer. You're still weak. I can tell. I have enough magic to overpower you. Oh, really? Aquila said. And what makes you think that? I just know I can. Mom said, but she sounded scared. Aquila laughed louder. You can't do anything to me, Grim. Her body's mine now. That's the deal she made with me. She made the deal to keep me from killing you. Funny how the tables turn, isn't it? Mom pushed a little closer again as the doctor started to cry. What is that thing? Mom ignored him. What deal? What were the terms? Aquila cocked my head to one side as if she was considering answering the question. Then she smiled again. She'd let me into her mind and body so I could heal her. In return, I promised I'd let you live, and I'd give you and her five to ten years to enjoy her time with you before I took her over. If that's true, then why are you taking over now? Because I can. Mom narrowed her eyes. You made a deal, and you should keep it, Aquila. Let my daughter have her time. Why? So you can try and find a way to pull me out of her? Aquila said. You say that like there's a way to do it. Mom said with a smile. And there's not. Not unless I choose to leave her. Mom started walking around Aquila. How about I make a deal with you, Aquila? Take my body. Leave this stable and do what you want with me. But let my daughter live. The magic coming out of me stopped as Aquila looked at Mom with a little amusement. Then she stepped closer to Mom until my face was an inch away. Sorry, but your body couldn't handle my power. You've damaged it too much using that magic of yours. Mom blinked and took a step back. 
What do you mean? Aquila chuckled. I felt it when I was going to take you over in that lab. I thought a mare like you would have noticed it, Grim. Mixing your unicorn magic with zebra magic is a bad combination. It's slowly destroying your body, little by little. Mom looked down at her body, then sighed. It doesn't matter. I know I can still handle you being inside of me. Please, let my daughter go. If I took your body, Grim, you'd be destroyed, and so would I. My life is tied to the host. So if you really want to get rid of me, you'll have to just kill your daughter, because that's the only way I'm leaving. Aquila said, laughing again as she backed away. What if I can get your own body? Mom yelled desperately. Aquila cocked her head. I have a body now. I don't need another. Your daughter is the perfect fit. I mean a body of your own. My friend Stormy works with the Ministry. They were working on making a new kind of synthetic pony, one that's almost indistinguishable from a real pony. And that's not possible. And I never want to deal with any Ministry again, Aquila said. It's not the Ministries from the war. It's just a name they gave themselves. They've been creating pony-like robots for over a decade, or longer. Now, they are close to making a real pony. If I can get you a body of your own, would you leave my daughter? Mom asked. Aquila shook my head. If you even could do that, I'm sure it wouldn't happen for a few years. By the time you were able to get this body for me, it would already be too late. Soon I'll be bonded with your daughter so deeply that only deep magic could pull us apart. Even if you could do magic like that, you'd most likely kill us both along with yourself. So no, Grim, I won't leave her. Mom sighed. Then you leave me no choice. What do you mean? Aquila said. Mom's horn started to glow. At the same time, the doctor started yelling for help. At first, Mom turned towards him and used a knockout spell on him. Then she twisted back to Aquila. I'll make sure you can't take my daughter over for a long time. Magic circles appeared all over the room, surrounding Aquila. Grim, you can't do anything to... Aquila started to say, then her voice was cut off as the magic circles started to glow brightly. Mom's horn glowed brighter as she said in a deep voice full of power, I'll trap you deep inside my daughter's head and keep you there till I can find a way to remove you from her. My eyes went wide as Aquila tried to say something, but couldn't. There was a flash of blinding light, then Aquila was gone, leaving me to fall to the ground. Mom collapsed when the spell was finished. She looked over at the sleeping form, saying, Even if it kills me, I'll make sure you live, my little star. Then the memory ended. The next one found Mom lying in bed with her vein, sitting next to her, saying, Grim, are you feeling any better? Mom replied in a weak voice, Better than yesterday, yes. Why didn't you tell me that spell would hurt you so much? Ravane said. I didn't know it would be that bad, but at least it worked. Every pony has forgotten you came from the outside. I may have to do a little work to make sure the spell holds, but at least we're safe, Mom said. Grim, most of your manes turned gray, and you look like you've aged a couple of years. I'll be fine. I just need some rest. What's happened with the Overmare and our situation? Thanks to your spell, she thinks I've always been the administrator of Stable 28. They're calling me Auntie now, and she was willing to talk with me about you staying. She thinks it'd be a good idea if you stay here and help with R&D, Ravain said. Mom sighed. I can live with that. Make sure you let Elder Applejam know that we're on track. In R&D, I can find out what the stable is really doing, and it will give Shadow time to heal. I still sounds strange, kind of like a shadow now, Vervain said. I know, but it is more fitting. I guess you're right, Vervain said thoughtfully. So, what are you going to do now? She's still not awake. I know. I've been keeping her asleep while I block her memories, Mom said. What? Vervain said in surprise. Why are you doing that? While I was caging Aquila, she started hiding herself in Shadow's memories, so I have to block them. Also, Shadow keeps having nightmares, even in her enchanted sleep. I'm not blocking them forever, just long enough for her to heal and grow up some. One day, she'll be able to handle the memories. 
But for now, I need her to have as normal a life as she can, Mom said. She's not going to know who she is or where she's from, Grim. She may not even be the same filly if her memories are gone. I know, but I'm being careful. She'll be okay, I'm sure of it, Mom said. I hope so, Grim. I really do, Ravane said as the memory started to fade away. I was expecting the next memory to be more of the stable, but Mom thought I didn't need to see what she was up to in the stable more than the beginning stuff. This memory was years later, because she was talking to Stryker just outside a city that looked like it was made from a nightmare. In the distance, past green clouds and misty rain, stood a city surrounded by walls, a huge tower at its center. Even in Mom's memory, I felt like something was wrong with this place, almost like evil lived in that dead-looking place. How'd you find me, Grim? Stryker said. He hadn't been burnt yet. Not like when I met him the other day. But the years since he left the Enclave took its toll. He looked twenty years older. His bright coat was now dull. His mane was cut short and his eyes had a hard look to them. It took some time and a lot of bribes to get information gathering. But no pony can hide forever, Mom said. I hope that my brother isn't with you. I need to kill two ponies today that I care about, Stryker said. Nightshade isn't here, Stryker. Only me, Mom replied. So you say? Still, why are you here, Grim? I need to know if you know anything about Falling Shadows. You're the only pony I know who's been able to dig up most of its secrets. He rolled his eyes. You traveled all the way to Hoofington just to ask me that. Go home, Grim, before I decide to shoot you. Mom frowned and said in a hard voice, Don't do that to me, Stryker. He looked back at her. Do what? Don't cast me aside because you're mad that I married your brother. He got angry as well. And why shouldn't I? You betrayed me when you decided to jump into his bed after I was gone, Grim. Betrayed you? You broke my heart, Stryker. You were the one who left without telling me why. Mom yelled. I had to. If I didn't break it off with you, the Enclave would have taken you in when I left. I could just ask you to run away with me, Grim. You had a good life going. I didn't want to make it worse. Oh, so you thought that insulting me would be better. Mom said. I didn't want to, but it was the only way that I have to keep you safe. I was going to come back when things settled down and explain everything to you. And when I did, I saw you with him, Stryker said, his voice raising. I would have left everything behind for you, Stryker. Back then I loved you. I didn't just go out and get with Nightshade just to piss you off. He was there for me when you weren't. He was kind to me. He helped me get over you. I fell in love with him because he was there. Mom yelled, tears rolling down her face. Oh, so let me guess. My little brother needs help understanding why Falling Shadows is all about, huh? What does he want with it? Because he can't use it. No pony can. Now without the key, Stryker said. Nightshade has no idea where I am. I haven't been home in years. That seemed to take him by surprise. Really? Then where's your daughter? I heard you had a foal some years back. I could feel Mom's chest tighten as she said, She died. Stryker seemed to calm down some as he said, I didn't know, Grim. I'm sorry. She died because I didn't know everything about another project that I'm sure you know about. Stargazer. Stryker's eyes went big as he said, How did you find out anything about Stargazer? I have my ways. But because of it, a monster called Aquila, Star died and escaped. Now I'm trying to find Falling Shadows so I can use his power to destroy her, Mom said. Now, tell me what you know. Stryker looked sick as he said. Grim, you have no idea what Falling Shadows is. Then tell me. He sighed. It was first made to make Luna into Nightmare Moon again. Only with control of her power, 
That was what Stargazer was for. But the project failed and created Aquila. I know that much, Mom said. Luna had the program shut down, but Night Stalker had Manette keep the lab accessible just in case they could use it later. They used in the information they got from making Stargazer to start falling shadows. Yes and no. A stargazer is the key to falling shadows. Night Stalker wanted to make sure that the project worked, so he had his team, along with Stable Tech, expand the idea. But made sure that Aquila's power was the only thing that could make it work. It can do one of two things. Either take her power and transfer it to a pony who can handle its power to make them more powerful. Or it can pull the rest of the power from the stars that made Aquila and give it to the body she's in. Stryker said. I also believe that it can be used to give the power from the stars to a pony as powerful as she is. It's possible, but most likely the pony would die from it, he said. It doesn't matter anyway, because no pony can use the project ever since it was locked down. I know, by the Mach 2. Stryker looked shocked again. How did you... I know a lot, Stryker. I don't care about your warnings. I need to know where the towers are and which one was locked down. Mom said, and don't bullshit me. I'm not in the mood. He sighed. Fine, but once I tell you, I want you to leave. Fine with me, Mom said coldly. There are four towers. One in the Badlands, I'm not sure where. One in Baltimore. One's in the middle of the Crystal Empire. And I think the last is the Lucky Horseshoe in New Pegasus, Stryker said. Mom smiled a little. Good. Thanks for the information, Stryker. I'll let you get back to your sad life. She turned to leave. Stryker chuckled. You know, even if you could find the Mark II to unlock Falling Shadows, it won't work. Mom slowly turned back towards him. What do you mean? Night Stalker did something to the project the day he disappeared. Never found out what. But his last recorded act was him attacking the Crystal Empire and locking down the tower there, so that even if someone had found the Mark II, the project still couldn't be used. Have fun trying to use the power at Asgrim, because no matter what you do, it won't work. He said, flapping his wings to fly up a little. Oh, and thank you for telling me about Aquila getting free. It's been a while since I've had good information to go on, something like her. If she's in a host, then the best way is to kill Aquila. The only other way... The only the key to falling shadows is by killing the host. Mom's eyes went wide as she started to activate her magic. Strike her, wait! Say hello to Nightshade when you see him again. And fuck you, Grim, he said, flying away before Mom could do anything to stop him. No, I can't let you. Damn it, Striker! Mom said as she stomped the ground. The memory faded, and again another memory took its place, to find Mom sitting up by her shack, watching as none other than Stardust flew by, his old pit buck in her magical grip. What a nice stallion. Shame I'm going to have to tell Stormy where he is. A shadow pulled away from the shack behind her, and Nori Callus was standing next to her. I don't understand why you didn't take him out. In time, brother. I still need him. For what? My uncle asked. Stormy said that he's the key to making a project work. If she's right, with her help, the Ministries, we can finally free Stratus and Nimbus from Navarro, Mom said. And here I thought you didn't care about the Enclave anymore, sis. She sighed. I care about it, but it's sick and needs to be fixed. Why do you think I came back and gave all the information I had on the NLR, the Steel Rangers, and the Romans to them? I need them to trust me, and that's why they put me in charge of the sins. I guess. But I'd still like to kill him. Stardust can be a lot of trouble if he's not put in his place. Morikala said. I know, but he'll come around, and if he doesn't, we always have plan B. Anyway, did you get the information I asked for? Mom asked. He looked over at Mom. Yeah. Looks like things are moving into place. I took care of Stormy for you and got her out of the Crystal Empire like you asked. She was able to confirm before she left that the last tower's entrance was where you figured it was. 
So the entrance is in the Forgotten Library. Looks like it. But no pony can get in. Its location isn't hard to find in the library, but it's got a genetic code lock. One that I think Night Stalker made to only work for him. Shit. So that means the only his descendants can get in, Mom said. He nodded. Yep. It's a good thing that only two living descendants don't know about it. But it makes it impossible for us to get in. Not unless we force Nightshade or Striker to unlock it for us. Mom sighed. That would be hard. Damn it. Mordekala sighed as well and leaned down to hug his sister. If Star was still with us, she could have done it. Mom hugged him back. I know. Still, we will find a way to make this work. You should go. Make sure Envy is brought in cartwheel. I need him watching for that mare I told you about. Are you really sure this mare will leave the stable? Also, how are you sure that she has the mark too? He asked. Trust me, brother. I made sure everything is in place. Before I left that stable, I made sure that mare would find her way out. She'll have the pit buck on her as well. Just make sure that we take her alive. I don't want her harmed. He smiled. I'll do my best, sis. As he teleported away, Mom sighed and looked down at her own Stable 28 pit buck. She hooked it up to Stardust's old one and transferred all her data over to it. And then she used her master key to remove her own, and she put on Stardust's. When she was done, she pulled out a recording and stuffed it in the middle of a four-leg hole. When she was done, she teleported right next to the tree not far from her shack. She then placed her pit buck in that tree, on the same branch I found it later. Let's just hope that you aren't able to track this pip buck down, Shadow. She sighed again and turned her head back to her shack. It's almost time for you to leave. I just need to make it a little longer. I miss you so much, my little star. The memory shifted again and I found my mother walking into Crossroads Trading Post. After trading a few apparently useless items for some caps, she was approached by a familiar face. You're not very smart. The familiar voice said. My mom back balked at the remark. Excuse me? Wait, what the hell? She said to the robot's serendipity. My apologies, she said as she raised her voice. I said that you are not very smart. I am not deaf, you spring-loaded piece of scrap metal. Why are you saying that I'm not smart? Mom retorted. Actually, I am not spring-loaded. I am operated by a series of gears, sprockets, and circuit boards. Hence the reason you are not smart, and a very poor perceptive. I'd say it floats around, too, on the special scale. However, that is not the only reason you are not smart. What's the other reason? Mom interrupted. The path you are following will lead you only pain, misery, and quite possibly your eventual death. It's been calculated down to the least tenth of a second. You will ultimately fail in your mission. Mom looked annoyed. Don't you have an owner to go piss off or something? Serendipity cocked her head. No, I don't have an owner. However, I usually have a group of ponies following me. But I'm between cults right now, because the last group refused to listen when I told them to follow me through a minefield. I can predict where the mines are, but I can't predict where all of them are. Plus, there's an extremely slight chance that I might be wrong. The only survivor was Intricate Torch. That was because he was pretty much next to me the whole time. Mom rubbed her eyes with a hoof. I'm being told that everything I've spent years doing is a waste by a robot with a cult following. She sighed. Is there anything I can do to prevent the... No, most likely not. Even if I told you the way to fix everything, you wouldn't remember anyway. Serendipity interrupted. Won't remember? I won't remember what? Mom asked. If I told you, there's an enormous probability that the very fabric of reality will be torn apart by the rupturing of the space-time continuum. Although you will eventually forget me and the things I've told you. Serendipity replied. What exactly are you? I'm a self-sustaining crusader mainframe. Serendipity replied simply. 
Ha! <laughs> I doubt it. If you were a Crusader mainframe, the Steel Rangers would have tracked you down and done stuff to you for experimentation purposes. Mom said. Due to my prediction matrix, I can avoid contact with the Steel Rangers. Uh-huh. Sure. Did you program yourself to tell me that I'm making bad choices in life and no matter what I do, I can't stop? Mom asked. Actually, I'm not here to talk to you. I'm here to talk to the pony watching you. I'm not going to see her for another few months, and by the time I do see her, it won't be very good time to tell her what I need to do. I'm not sure I wasn't followed. I am seriously doubt there's anyone watching me, Mom retorted. Serendipity smiled. Like I said before, not smart. I'm referring to the pony watching the memory of your encounter. It's imperative that you put this into your memory bank when you get back to the bunker in your shack. I'd ask how you know about my shack, but you'd just make another quip about me being some sort of idiot. I also tell you about the impossibility of somebody finding where I live, but there'd be a quip about that too, Mom said angrily. She needs to know that in a short time, evil will prevail, and that she shouldn't be around anyone that she cares about. The time will be short, but without the presence of evil afterwards, she will survive. However, she won't survive if she doesn't heed the warnings of the pony who holds the virtue of avarice. Serendipity said plainly. Mom smirked. What book did you download that one from? It wasn't a book. It was a message to Shadowstar. How do you know my daughter? Don't tell me she's one of your followers. Mom asked. No, she isn't. She actually had a similar reaction to yours when she met me. Serendipity interrupted. The evil you were talking about. It must be that arrogant creature Aquila. I thought I did my best to protect Shadow from the evil bitch. And who is this pony of avarice? By the way, that's not a virtue. I cannot tell you who the pony is, but avarice can be a virtue in its own way. I also can't say for sure that the evil is Aquila or not. Time is like waves in the ocean. It changes and fluctuates in unique patterns that change with every decision. Each pony has their own unique timeline that tells the story of their life. Some are just more interesting than others. Serendipity replied. So my story is boring? No, it is just too tragic. Serendipity replied simply. I dislike tragic stories that I can't do anything about. I know. Trust me, I know. Is there anything else you need to tell my daughter? Just that sometimes timber wolves can be the wisest of creatures, and that blue flowers aren't very funny. Serendipity said. Can I go home now? The way you talk makes my head hurt. I emit a type of radiation that could be causing that. Or it could be caused because I'm technically breaking one of the laws of time and space by sending a message. Time is very delicate. And in this case, your head is where the memory is crushed, currently being stored, which is the source of the law break. If it's stressed too much, it could cause a singularity, or just make your head burst like a microwave chicken egg. Serendipity replied. You didn't answer my question. Mom said annoyed. I can't tell you if you can go because you have free will and can leave at any time. Mom just turned and started walking away as the memory started to fade. And just before it ended, I heard Serendipity to say, Beware of the pony in the leather jacket, Grimoire. The memory faded, and another started in its place. It was Mom looking in the mirror of this bunker again. She looked so tired as she spoke. Now I hope you understand a little of why I did what I had to, Shadow. As you can see, I had to lie, cheat, steal, and kill, and much, much more to make sure that you lived. My life has been hard, with only small bits of light and happiness in it. Most parents would have taken the news of their child going to die as hard, but they would have had to deal with it by praying or crying over something they couldn't fix. I couldn't do that. All I ever wanted in life was to be happy and to be a mother. When I lost my first two foals, I thought I'd never get to be a mom. And you came into our life, and drew the light in my darkness. She took a deep breath, holding back tears. When you got sick, I didn't let it stop me from trying to find a way to make sure you lived a long life. 
I did everything that I could to find a way to keep you alive, and when I finally found a way to cure you, it was like the goddesses were punishing me. Because you went from being sick to almost dying to having a monster inside of you. I did what I could to keep her from taking over, but there's only so much my magic can do. I wanted to find Falling Shadows because I know its power can remove Aquila from you. Now, if I'm dead, then I'm sure that even that can't be done. If you were to use Falling Shadows, it would only make Aquila more powerful, and Equus would suffer because of it. So you'll only be left with two choices. You'll need to find my friend, Dr. Stormy. She should be in the Ministry. She's there most of the time. Go to the equestrian bank around midnight, and look for a pony that looks like your uncle. He's a synth named C-054. He's a friend, and can help get you in. The Director and Dr. Stormy will help you. They can get Falling Shadows activated, and Stormy has the power to handle its magic. She'll be able to remove Aquila and destroy her for good. Mom shifted, then wiped her eyes. Stormy is the only one who can help. But once Aquila is out of you, make sure you destroy Falling Shadows. Because not long ago I found information about something else the project can do. I can't tell you on here, just in case this place is ever found. Just let me say that if its other power is used, it will make Aquila look like a light rainstorm compared to a hurricane that comes with its power. But if something's happened to Stormy, or if you feel Aquila is about to take over for good, then, as much as I hate to say it, you'll have to end your own life. Mom started to cry again. I hope it doesn't come to that, my little star. But if it's the last choice that you have to, she can't get free. I'm sorry, Shadow. This is all my fault. I tried so hard to keep you from living such a bad life, but I failed. Like I always do. So go out there. Finish what I've started and live. If you don't, I'll see you in the afterlife. I love you, my little star. More than you'll ever know. I wanted so bad to reach out through this memory and hold my mom close and tell her I was going to be okay. I understood now why she tried so hard to keep me alive. Why she gave up so much for this one goal. But I couldn't. And as the last memory faded, I realized another truth from the memory of my uncle. I'm not just descended from the children of night, Minette. No. If what Mom said was true, in that memory and others I've seen, my father's line came from Nightstalker and Lightning Dust. I have bloodlines of three of the children of the night in me. No wonder I've been so drawn to Nightstalker and his team. It wasn't because of Mom looking into them. I've been drawn to them since before I knew about Falling Shadows or Stargazer, because I'm descended from the monster who helped create Falling Shadows. Who helped make Aquila? Who helped found the Enclave and cut Pegasi off from the Wasteland? No wonder Aquila chose to make a deal with me. I'm descended from a monster just like her. Whereas I realized this, another thing hit me from the last memory. Dread filled me as I realized that the only other pony, apart from Mom, who could help out, get Aquila out, was Dr. Stormy, the mare I killed in Mill City Tower. Mom's best friend since they were foals. A mare that tried to tell me something about my father and family before I cut her throat in my anger. Mom was wrong. I only had one choice left to make about what to do with Aquila. I had to die. Soon. The pod opened as I slowly opened my eyes. My body was sore from lying for so long in the pod, but I didn't feel hungry or thirsty. I saw why a second later when the machine pulled a few needles and tubes from my foreleg and out of my muzzle. I gagged along with Wind Thrasher, who was just waking up in the pod next to me. After a moment passed, I asked her, How long do you think we were in there? She rasped back. No idea. That was to my trying to make sense out of all that. Your mom had a hard life, Shadow. But she loved you so much. I had no idea how hard it was. Mom never talked about her family apart from my uncle. I said slowly, getting out of my pod. My joints popped. Where is everyone? She got out of her own pod, looking around as her ears started moving back and forth. Sounds like they're upstairs. Then she looked back at me. Shadow, the last memories, do you think it's true? 
that you're related to? Night Stalker? From what my mom said, I'm guessing it's true. She hadn't been wrong yet about her side of the family. So I'm sure she's right about Dad's. You really didn't know? She asked. No, Dad never talked about his family either. When I was young, he cared more about telling me stories about monsters and heroes, not about where he came from. But let's forget about it for now. Let's find out what's going on while we're out. I said, heading towards the stairs. Okay, but we should talk about this. Your mom said that you have to deal with Aquila soon, Windthrasher said as she followed me. I know, but right now I want to see how long we were out. I was cut off as Wingnut came running down the stairs. He looked panicked as he said quickly, Perfect! You two are finally out of that thing! I stretched, then asked, Yeah, how long were we out? Three days, he said, looking like he was in a hurry. But we can talk about it later. You need to get up here. Quickly. What? Why? I asked. Well, what happened? When Thresher asked at the same time. We have a guest. Wingnut said, running back up the stairs, saying, Hurry, before Aquila kills him. Windthrasher and I looked at each other, then back at Wingnut, who was running back up. We followed the colt as quick as our bodies would allow. When we reached the top, I saw what had him worried. Stardust was pointing his rifle at the lift, Aura holding her spear and Bite looking a little scared, all because of one stallion standing in the doorway with a bloody grin on his face. He saw me and his grin only got bigger. At first, I couldn't tell what was all over the blue pegasus until I got closer and saw that Greed was covered in cuts and covered in blood. He had two bullet wounds in him, and one ear was cut in half. His eyes lacked their normal bright cheerfulness I was used to seeing on him. When I got close to my friends, Greed said slowly, Hey there, Shadow. Mind telling your friends to calm down some? As much as I like a good fight, I reckon I'm not in any condition to properly defend myself. I looked at them, saying, Stardust? Aura? Lower your weapons. Greed's on our side. When they did, both looked confused as I started running towards him. Creed, what's happened to you? He just chuckled and spat blood on the polished floor. There's a good filly. I ain't Greed anymore. Cloak made sure of that. As for what happened, the old pride's back, and he's pissed. I think all of you should run. Greed? What are you saying? My uncle wouldn't hurt me. Now, tell me what happened. I said as I got close to him. He just laughed again. Didn't he hear? I ain't Greed no more. Greed's dead. Then he fell forward, passing out in a growing pool of his own blood. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Tragic magic. You like to put your body under a lot of stress, don't you? Due to your prolonged exposure to the radiation pouring out of your brain from the memory machine, you now gain the ability to make strangers relive their most traumatic memories. However, magic always comes with a price. You'll also lose a small part of your soul when casting this spell.